Well, hello everyone. I hope you're having a great day today. Hey, welcome to Wednesday's edition of Take Five, and we're in a we're in a different venue again. Actually, we're in the same place we were at least one day last week. I'm I'm sitting out here in my boat. I was making some preparations, uh, hoping to get to maybe go fishing towards the end of the week. And I just wanted to take the time to to talk with you and and share with you some things uh, from the message this past Sunday. You know, we, we we were looking at that thought, you know, the sinking feeling, and we we really understand what that is. That's that that nauseating feeling that you get in the pit of your stomach. Uh, you know, when you when you failed, when you did not make the mark like you should. It's that emotional roller coaster that you get on that you go from sad to mad and anger to depression and back and forth and, and all of those things that you deal with. And it's also the thoughts that you have about, you know, public opinion. What what do people think about it? And a lot of times, you know, you do have to deal with people thinking about, uh, you, you know, certain things about your failure. And, and some people are, you know, condemn and, and they are judgmental and especially when they're not willing to do what you were willing to do. But then there are are times that, you know, people aren't thinking anything and you've just perceived that in your head. And so when it comes to overcoming that sinking feeling, it, it's how we perceive our failure and how we perceive that discipline that we know we're going to get from God. Uh, that That's a lot of times has to do with how well we get over our failure and we get up and we walk again. Now, yesterday, uh, as we were talking about Peter, we learned that Jesus called him. He gave him that command, that call to get out of the boat, and, and Peter did it. And you need to remember, we talked about it yesterday, but you need to remember, just because you have a command or a call from God doesn't mean that failure is not an option. It's, it's always an option. As long as we are factored in to this divine equation, as long as there's a human factor there, uh, there's the potential for failure. And, and, and Peter started well. But just because he started well doesn't mean that you're not going to have problems all along the way. Now, I want to pick up at verse 30 because it talks a little bit more about his situation. In verse 30, it says, When he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. And I want to break that verse down into three three parts if I, I can. The first part, when he saw the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. Let me tell you something. Failure is always inevitable if you focus on what you're seeing instead of what you know you have heard from the Lord. Too, too many times we focus on what we're seeing. Now, look, just because we get a command and a call from God and just because Jesus says, hey, come on and walk on top of this storm, walk on top of these waves with me. Just because he says that doesn't mean that we are not going to have to look fear right in the face while we're doing this. You're just going to have to do it. Maybe this is what Paul was talking about when he said the things that we see are temporary, but the things we don't see are eternal. Peter finds himself seeing wave after wave after wave crashing uh, around him and the wind blowing against him and, and the rain coming down and the lightning flashing. He sees all of this stuff that's happening and he begins to become afraid of what he's seeing and he forgets what the Lord has told him. And that was be of good cheer. I am with you. Don't be afraid. Come walk with me. Now that's that in itself, it's powerful to know that Jesus is telling you, hey, don't worry about this stuff. Don't worry about what you're seeing. I, I'm with you. Come walk with me with me. Why, why don't you walk with him, friend? Jesus is not going to fail. He's not going to sink. He's not going to drown. You, you know, the disciples were in a storm with him before. We read about that in, in Mark 4 once here, I, I don't know, uh, four, five, six weeks ago. He was in a storm with them on the boat, and, and they were afraid. But look, look, if Jesus is with you, what do you have to fear? That boat wasn't going to sink, and now Jesus is walking on the water. He's sure not going to fall beneath the waves. So what do you have to fear? Don't focus on what you see. Focus on what you know you heard the Lord tell you, and that's be of good cheer. I am with you. Don't be afraid. Come walk with me. The second part of that verse I want us to look at says, but when he was uh, when he saw the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. 
Now, I want you to understand, Peter didn't lose all of his faith all at one time. He, it, it waned wave after wave after wave that he saw. That's how his faith, it, it decreased a little bit at a time. He didn't get completely over his head all at once. Failure doesn't work that way. He sank gradually. The more fear arose, the more his faith sank. And it, and it wasn't something that happened all at once. It's a gradual process. And so is every failure in our life. It's, it's not one of those things where we just boom and we blow up all at one time. It's a gradual process process of failure. It's wave after wave. It's it's lightning flash after lightning flash. You know, it, it's, it's one little bit at a time. Hebrews chapter 12 and James chapter 1 both speak, or Hebrews 3 rather and James 1 both speak to us uh, about the gradual effects of things in our life. Hebrews 3 says, encourage one another every day to pursue righteousness so you will not become gradually acclimated to sin's deceitfulness. So see, failure doesn't happen all at once. It's a gradual thing. And then James said, each person is tempted when he's lured and enticed by his own desires. Then desire uh, conceives and gives birth to sin. And then sin, when it is fully grown, it gives birth to death. So it's one of those things that happens a little bit at a time. This, this level of failure that Peter experienced was a process. It was one wave of fear after the other. Now, the good news in all of this is that Peter knew what to do to get out of the situation that he was in. And that was call out on Jesus because the next verse said, or the same verse, the last part of it said, when he saw the wind was boisterous and he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out and said, Lord, save me. When you're sinking in the problems of life or giving in to temptation or falling to your flesh, when you see that beginning to happen, the solution is the same for everybody. Call out to Jesus. Now, while I am sitting here in my boat, I do I am reminded of a friend of mine who he just put a new motor on his boat and, and he deserved to do that. He had had a lot of problems with that motor that he had. And there would be times he worked on it so much. He worked on it at home. He worked on it when it was broke down on the river. He kept tools in his boat with him and he would work on it there. And so here recently, within the past year, he put a new motor on his on his boat and his wife was was telling us a story uh, that they would be out fishing and that thing would break down and and people would come by and and ask do you need help and he would say oh no no we're good we we got it and and she said she would just sit there and look at him like he was stupid or something or other because that was you know an offer of help and he passed it by but but you know he had the idea that he could fix it and he did every time don't do Jesus that way don't do God that way. Don't wave him on by when he's standing there offering you the help that you need. Cry out to him and he will pick you up. Friend, don't be the person that waves him on by and says, no, 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 no. I got this. Let me tell you something. You don't. You don't have it. Don't trust in yourself. Go ahead and cry out to Jesus and he will pick you up so you can walk again. Well, hey, I've got to get out of here. It's been good being with you today. I look forward to being with you tomorrow on Thursday's edition of Take 5. Until then, God bless you. Have a great day. Remember this, friend. Trust the Lord. He will never fail you.